What's up guys, welcome to the channel. On today's video we have got this cool little 128 scale uh, racing drift car. It looks awesome. There's carbon fibre on it, there's metal parts on it, it runs on a LiPo and it's possibly the coolest little mini RC car I've ever seen. So this is a um, Sino or Sino, Sino Hobby uh, Mini Q. From what I've seen they're quite popular little um, drift cars. This one I think has got like rubber tyres on it. Let's get it out of the box. There's nothing else on the box apart from racing uh, drift car as it says. Let's get out of the box. Let's have a closer look. I'm having to redo this because I had a little bit of an issue with the camera. Um, so the body's already painted and I'll show you that in a minute. It does come with a clear body. I've got that clip so I can put that up but there's some issues with the other stuff. So clear body. It's a Mitsubishi Evo 10 I believe. It's got this cool little transmitter. It's got a built-in um, built-in gyro on there. I've had this transmitter before on one of my other drift cars. You've got throttle duration, steering duration, steering trim, or dual rate, whatever you want to call it. Not a mad transmitter. Fits in the hand quite nice. Good for one-handed driving. Uh, four AAA batteries. You get a load of accessories for the body set, like a rear valance and stuff like that, some wing mirrors. Uh, wipers, I'll put some of that on. You also get a set of different body posts, um, some body clips and little foams there for supporting your uh, body. Little 450 milliamp hour uh, two cell lipo there, very nice. But the best bit is the car itself. How cool does that look? Loads of carbon fibre on there, loads of metal parts, lots of adjustment to be had on there. Let's have a closer look at that. I will show you the body in a minute, uh, but let's just have a closer look at the chassis. Fully adjustable there for your camber. You've also got a load of adjustment under there. Adjustment there for your um, toe in, toe out. That's the, the rear suspension. So rear suspension as well. That suspension's adjustable. You've got little adjustable collars on there. Some nice little wheels with rubber, uh, like rubber bands around them. Wider at the back than they are at the front. Little mini servo there, a 130 motor. And then front end again, quite a bit of adjustment on the front end. Adjustable shocks. Now the diffs, let me see how close we can get in here. So just just there in the diff, you can see that's like a little, um, looks like you can turn that. And I'm guessing if that's the case, you can tighten them diffs up to lock them because at the moment they're open diffs. Um, but I'm guessing uh, that's to uh, lock the diffs. There's one in the front and one in the back. It's got a combined ESC and receiver on top there, carbon top plate, and overall, it is a really nice looking uh, little car. This is going to be so cool um, burning around. I don't really want to take it outside. This is ideal for like a little carpeted area or um, if you've got a smooth surface for a little bit of drifting. Anyway, do you want to see the body? Let's have a look at the body. So there it is guys, it is not, I have not done the best job of this, <laughs> I hate uh, painting bodies. It does come with a sticker sheet and it does come with um, masking for the light, uh, for the windows. I went for a lime green, the only issue I've had is it comes with uh, marks to put holes in but it's not right for the mounts on the chassis so I had to do it uh, myself and it's okay. I had to trim the arch on this side uh, and on this side hopefully it would turn like that. But overall, I think it looks quite nice. Obviously Evo is meant to have all black around the front there. It comes with some stickers but I couldn't find the one for the middle so meh, I'm just going to leave it like that. Right, I've got the battery charged. Let's put some um, batteries in the transmitter switch and then see what uh, the sort of speed is with the wheels and the steering and then We'll take it outside for a burn. Right, power on the transmitter. 
hell if I plug this in, wouldn't it? <laughs> oh, I just struggled to get this body on as well. I think the balance lead plugs in. Fair enough. Not seen that before, but that's how it does it. <laughs> nice. Fully proportional. Forward, brake, reverse. There's your steering. I guess you can adjust. That's it fully adjusted, so uh, we might need to look at that because it doesn't want to turn that way very well. I can't see the gyro working. I might have to uh, look at the instructions for this. It's got a bit of speed. Oh yeah, this is fast. Well, I suppose I better put the body back on and go and find somewhere dry and smooth uh, to drive this. Right, so no driving yet. I've just noticed the rear diff. You hear it slipping. I don't want to do it too much, but the spur is, you're not going to be able to see it in there, but um, because it's all open, it just pushes on to the rear diff, but it's actually moved. Uh, so I need to look into that and find out why it's moved, because I'm not taking it out like that, because if I, like that, it's just not touching the rear and it's going to uh, chew all the teeth up. So I'm going to have a look at that. Then uh, we may <laughs> be able to take it out for a drive. So I did manage to get it out and give it a run. However, it was not all um, rosy and it, took me a long, long time to get it to this point where uh, you can see it running now. Not the ideal surface, but it's the smoothest surface um, I've got at the moment. Um, you can see we're running a little bit of a uh, Tokyo Drift style uh, rear end there with it all chopped off. Uh, we'll talk about that in a second. I'll just let you watch the rest of the run footage and then we'll go back to the garage and just have a little chat because this thing is really good, it's got loads of potential and I've seen loads of good stuff online about it. it the experience for me though, has not been all that good. Right, so here it is then uh, with that back end cut off and we'll talk about that first. The reason I had to do that is because I've had to extend, because I've had to extend the wheelbase and move it back one slot. Now, the issue with the spur and the pinion not meshing turned out, turns out that you need to shim the diff. They don't provide any shims, but what I did find out is there's two different size bearings. You've got a, um, a slightly smaller one on one side compared to the other. So I just switched them round it pushed the um, pushed the diff further into the pinion and it meshed. However, the original pinion had already lost most of its teeth from me uh, testing it. So I got a new one, which was slightly longer for a longer wheelbase mini Q. But we got it running and the gear mesh is absolutely fine after that. So just make sure you check the diff and shim it. Really easy to take apart. Make sure it's shimmed or at least, um, you know, got a good mesh on there. Now, once I got the... Uh, like the pinion sorted, which seemed to take me forever. I got that sorted. I then had an issue with the drive shafts popping out and it started with the front. Um, so again, with the front, I just switched the um, switched the bearings around so that the diff cups were even each side and the drive shafts are just staying in there, but there's no tolerance at all on them 
um, the drive shaft. There's no tolerance for the CVD into the drive cup. It's literally sat on the edge. And I'm not going to be able to get this in close enough to show you that. Um, but that is an issue. So a couple of times in the run video, it uh, it lost the drive shaft, popped out, and I had to change it. Again, another teething problem. I don't want to leave it on a negative, though, because when I've been trying to fix it, I've looked online at these and done a little bit of digging. They are, um, these mini Qs, very similar in design, or definitely very similar in style to their Mini Z from uh, Kyosho and... I think they're pretty similar to the WL Toys variant as well. They have got loads of potential. I've seen someone drift in it and they look awesome drifting. So although for me the experience has been bad, if you do buy one of these and you've got the patience to get it set up properly, these things are awesome. In road trim, racing around a little mini Z, um, you know, Kyoshu track, you can buy the tracks or indoor tracks, this thing's gonna be awesome. Drifting, it's gonna be even better. Um, so we'll leave it there. Although I've had a bad experience for this, I know from looking on other videos that they're actually all right once you've uh, fiddled around with them and sort of got all the teething problems out of them and the uh, slight lack of quality in there. I don't know how you address the drive shafts though, but I've seen loads of people uh, without that issue, so it must be doable. Anyway, I know someone that I really like this and they will make it into a little drift car they will make it work as well. So I'm gonna box this up, send it to them, because they'll get they'll have the time and patience that I haven't got to get it running. Cheers for watching guys. I'll see you next time.